Hello and welcome to the 3D Printing Primary School. Today's topic is profile offsets, as you can see here. I've been getting a lot of questions lately um, from the other video I've made on how to set the offset, but people didn't understand and I kind of took it really fast and stuff. So uh, this is a bit more of a uh, explanation video. It's a bit longer, I'm sorry for that, but my editing skills aren't, uh, you know, the, the best, but hopefully in the future I get better. So um, first of all, topic is both offsets let's first talk about what we're going to talk about so we were going to talk about what we'll we need for this to um, adjust the probe offsets basically what is a probe offset the types of probes how do they work the variables that you will need or what they are and how to adjust the probe position in firmware software or well physically basically so um First of all, you will need this guide in case um, that you've printed out a new shroud and the um, touch probe has a different location. It moved around somewhere else than the stock version. And um, you have to tell the printer where it is. Otherwise, it will think it's in the original position, which can cause the probe to, when it's probing, not hit anything. Because let's say you've moved it more forward. And when it's probing the first point, it, it might not hit the bed at all. So... Um, yeah, also the location or the coordinates that the data is from will be misregistered since you move the probe and it will sometimes, sometimes not, it will cause a um, wonky uh, 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 probe adjustment because, you know, the actual coordinates aren't right. So it scrambles around the, the um, topographic data, I suppose. There are any hard words, um, put them in the comment, I'll explain them to you or you can just Google them sometimes and you'll figured out most of the time so that's basically why you need it so uh, let's start first of all what you need you need a printer that's capable of connecting a probe you might be watching a video uh, deciding that you want a probe and you watch this you know as a precaution um, you need a board on the printer that's capable of connecting one the original ender trees for instance that has the 8-bit boards do not natively support it you will need a breakout board you will need a device to flash the board and uh, the, the motherboard uh, and then to flash it and then you'll have a flasher device thingy that you basically will never use unless you're upgrading again which is basically never so uh, i advise against that i would advise you to if you have an old 8-bit board and you want to probe just get a uh, another motherboard like uh, enter or reality v 4.2.2 or 4.2.7 or the one i recommend the uh, uh, e3d i think it's e3 or e3 uh, mark i don't know mark 3 mini sk3 v3 or something like that i will put it in the description so look into that it's a great board it allows you to expand a bit more um you also need a probe of course there's different kinds of probes i will also show that there's you can there's many many types of probes diy um, lasers what you name it um it's just what you want to spend um but they all basically work the same. Um, as long as you have a bracket to attach it to your printer, you can use it. So you can Google that um, for which cap you want. Um, you need a method of connecting the printer to the probe, be it the breakout board, as I said before, or just, you know, the straight up cable that uh, gets provided usually on the probe. Be sure that your probe comes with the cable. Sometimes it doesn't. Then you have to buy it separately and it can add up in costs because it's like uh, 10 euros more or something like that. I need a piece of paper for the calibration. Um, you will see that later, right? You need a pen or a marker or a pencil, something you you know you can mark a location with on the paper. You need a desktop PC, a laptop, or a Raspberry Pi if it has a display output that you can control, a G code reader or something like that. Um, and an SD card for certain applications, because I will be showing three methods, and out of those three, two of them you need an SD card, which you probably have on your printer. So, what is a probe? As Wikipedia kindly uh, provides us with the answer, it's a small device, especially an electrode, used to explore, investigate, or measure something by penetrating or being placed in, or in this case, on it. So basically, if you can see, it's basically a switch that um, the moment it hits something physically, transmit that it hit something, and with that information, you can kind of correlate or extrapolate 
a physical orientation location and then if you do that many times you can basically get like a geometric uh, map of the servers you're hitting you can see you can imagine it like your finger touching your desk and the moment it touches the desk you know it hit it so you know the reference look point where it hits and if you do it all around you can basically feel the outline just imagine if you were blind and doing that you have like some topographical point map that you've made so there's a few types of probes these are basically the most used ones that i've seen at least um you have the regular uh well touch hair trigger ish probe i believe the bl touch uses a um, halifax sensor which is like a magnetic sensor so if a little metal end comes close enough to the top to the uh, magnetic sensor it triggers it so it's also a switch then in the middle top you have the um limit switches the another hall effect switch i believe and a pressure switch i believe which are all switches they work essentially in the same way it hits something and it completes a circuit the one down is a laser um, or lidar sensor um i'm not particularly well informed about how it works i know the basic of it basics of it so basically uses a laser to hit an object or surface and it reads out the deflection or something and um, gives you a reference distance basically and then you have the last one on the right is basically also limit switch but it's more of a diy version i guess uh not really commercial grade i suppose but it works fine as well it, it's accurate enough for a 3d printer usually as long as it's uh, made from a stiff enough material so these are basically the types you have so you can either buy a commercial version or a diy version but um, all of these you should double check if they're compatible with your printer if they have the right leads um, because it's basically a, a switch like it completes a circuit and as long as the firmware or your motherboard gets the signal it doesn't matter where it comes from it will trigger it and work basically so uh, you can go really cheap or really expensive i think the bill touches like 45 euros if you buy a uh, or uh, uh, yeah an original one and if you buy a knockoff it's like 30 20 euros but i i would go for the original they're more reliable and accurate and stuff uh the cr touch by the way don't buy it it's a piece of junk uh i had mine for like uh two weeks or something and it broke so and it rattles around as well so don't get it so how do they work they're basically a switch as uh, i said before so um as you can see here with this uh, linear uh, rail basically or i think it's a worm drive rail but anyway um it moves linearly in an axis in this case well, i would call this an x-axis for instance but this works the same as a y-axis because it's just a linear movement it will move up and down in a straight constricted way so it's precise so it won't deflect left to right um, and the moment you would for instance put your hand in the middle of it it would stop for instance and that point um, is basically the, the the probe point that it hits the measurement so let's say the end of this um, linear rail is like 100 millimeters if I put my hand in the middle it could only move halfway so the measurement that it gets is oh 50 millimeters is my bottom point so that's my reference point so my uh, measurement is 50 millimeters from my top end to the middle end that it stops at so you get 50. so if you move around the the, the probe all over your bed it hits a lot of points you basically get geometric data and then the printer can extrapolate this and adjust your z height appropriately so it's always at the right distance the more um, points you have probed the more accurate it is but also the more time it is like uh, i think it takes five minutes for my printer to probe 25 points maybe it's a bit less i, I just exaggerate maybe but if you probe like nine points it's like 20 seconds so uh, but it's also less accurate then so i personally like 25 and up for my ender tree uh, even though it takes longer for me it's worth it for like those longer prints and after layer 10 anyway it, it fades out and goes to zero so your bed has to be somewhat level anyway 
Um, yeah, so once the moment it hits something, you have a reference um, to work from. So let's say your nozzle goes down from the Z-axis. Uh, I mean your probe. It hits something, then it knows, okay, that height, because I hit something, is zero. And anything above it is basically your stepper motor turning and it exactly knowing where it is. So your probe is basically there to say, um, I've hit the bottom, I can only go up. Um, and that's for different points to compensate for any bad warping or something like that. Sorry if this is a bit scuffed in explanation without any drawings or something. Still trying to work out uh, how to do this. So it's the best I can do, kind of. So the variables that they are is you have your relative position. Again, the moment you've hit something with the probe, that's your Z height zero. This is also why you have to carefully calibrate your um, C offset because your nozzle and the probe tip, the moment it triggers at least, um, have a different um, Z height, I guess, when it triggers or hits the uh, nozzle. So you have to add the offset so that the printer thinks that the um, ends of both tips are at the same height. Then you have your X and Y offset. This is basically um, the location of your um, 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 probe, relatively speaking, to your uh, nozzle. Then you have the C offset, same thing, but just in the C direction. And um, then there's the accuracy of the probe. If you go to the DIY version, your probe is most likely a little bit less accurate, like 0.5 millimeters, or for instance, or 0.1 or 0.05 or something like that. Whilst with a commercial one, your accuracy is like 0.001 millimeters. So doesn't sound like that much, but if you're talking about a um, offset you need from the bed to the nozzle of 0.1 millimeters, um, the DIY version sometimes has a bit of um, inaccuracy, which can mess you up. So I would still go for a more commercial solution. So um now we're here to the point where uh, we all wanted to go i hope you have a bit more insight on what a probe is how it's used etc but um we will now talk about the main part of the video which is um how do you adjust the um probe's position in firmware there is three methods you can do you can either use marlin's um software i suppose and then just uh, if you have um, something like uh octoprint that can feed through g-code i will show that um you can do it if you have your um firmware that you compiled yourself on your pc i will also show that you can do it through that or if you have an interface like printer face that you can just plug in a usb to the printer works as well um the requirement is that obviously your printer is capable of communicating with a computer or some sorts or you will need an sd card to um, connect to your computer upload it with the changes and then um, well update the firmware on your printer i suppose so it's any one of those that works so let's see we shall first start off with the um printer face Okay, so this is the um, PC that's connected to my printer. Um, it's I'm right now remote desktop into it. Uh, doesn't really matter. Um, so basically, what you do is you download Printerface, which is an interface to connect to your printer, and then you can move it and send the G codes and whatnot. So um, I will provide the download link in the description so you can download it. It's free. So you open it. Actually, I think I would have an instance open. Yes, I do. Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, this is printer face. What you do is you click here on connect on the left top. It says that it's connecting and it's online. So now it's successfully connected. So let's put this in the center a bit more. There we go. Make it a bit wider. Yes, so you can see it better. Okay, so basically, if you could see my printer right now, um, actually, let me start recording the printer so that it's a synced deal. 
Okay, so if I'm correct now with my movie magic, if not, then I'm sorry, you should be able to see the printer now somewhere on the screen. Um, what you will do is you will home the printer, as you can see it's um, connected, it's online, um, and I've homed it with this button over here. Um, and um, this is you, this we will use to send the commands to the printer later. But it's now ready to uh, be done. So after you've homed it, um, your Z axis went up a little bit, of course, to like because uh, it always does that after homing, it gives you a bit of space. Um, you will get a little piece of A4 paper. Um, you can either print out the grid or do what I did. You'll get a little piece of paper, you make a little X in the middle and a 90 degree um, angle, I suppose. You will line up the X with the nozzle of your printer, as straight as you can get. There you go. Then you will lower your Z until basically, there you go, until basically the nozzle hits the paper and it's firmly in place. The X now is hitting the nozzle, so that's your position for your nozzle. What you will now do is you will grab your pen, it's in my hand, I forgot, um, and now you will mark the location of your probe, which is in this case right here. So I will put down a little X. There you go. Be sure that the 90 degree angle is basically as straight as you can get under the printer. So your Y axis is straight and your X axis is also perpendicular to the gantry. Um, you can have a little bit of offset, but get it as close as you can get. Then you will take it out. And in my case, it's something like such. What you will now do is you will take this paper and you will start to measure. So let's say this distance for me is 32 millimeters. Another M. That means my Y offset is 32 millimeters. However, the firmware works a bit differently. You have something like this. And if this is your nozzle over here, any measurement in this direction is a negative, any in this is positive, any in this is negative, any in this is positive. So in case of mine, it's showing down, which means it's a negative, so it's minus 32. And my x equals zero because my x is not um, offset, it's straight right here. This is your Y offset, I guess. So let's say your nozzle or your uh, probe was right over here, for instance. How will you measure this? So you will get a ruler or something, or like a 90 degree angle thing, forgot the name of it. And you will draw two lines like such. Be sure that this distance and this distance are the same. Otherwise, your line is not in a 90 degree angle. It's a bit crooked. So be sure that this distance and this distance is the same. And then you can measure. So let's say this is, I don't know, 42, for instance. And this distance is, for instance, 17. Yeah. Then because it's here, so it's in this quadrant over here. Yeah, it will be y minus 42, x also minus 17. And again, if it was over here, for instance, and you drew a line over like so, this distance would be, let's say, 40, this distance would be about 20, yeah, then your x would be 40 but positive and your y would be 20 also positive so these are the way to measure your offset physically and it's basically the only way you can do it 
Um, so you can either draw it like this or you can print out a piece of like grid paper. You can just Google for that, I suppose, and then uh, do it the same way. That's what I did in the last video. Um, so once you have these um, um, coordinates, I suppose, uh, you know the offset of your um, probe in, in relatively speaking of your nozzle. Okay, so now that you have these coordinates, which are for me, for instance, x0, y is minus 23. Just to double check. M8, one. Okay, I was pretty close. Uh, I didn't actually measure it, I just, you know, used the number that was in my head. But it's over my, okay, so let's say yours were x is minus 17 and y is minus 42. What you would do was let me first write down these before I forget so I don't mess up my settings itself. What you will do is you will type in M. So everything is capital by the way, M851, uh, enter. And what you will get back is your printer settings, which is your NOS, uh, your probe X, Y, and Z offset. Uh, what I would do is I would negate the set offset so just make it zero later so that you start out fresh and you can re um, adjust your C offset so what you will do is type in over here M851 X and then your coordinates for instance the minus 17 space Y offset is for instance minus 42 and then Z equals zero so that it resets this value because if you have a new shroud and a new probe offset then most likely you will have another um, z offset as well so just make it zero what you will then do is press enter and as you can see it has sent this to the printer following the m851 you should type in m500 which is saving the settings there you go and you get a little prompt that says settings have been stored. And now if you type in M851, which will recall the M851 settings, as you can see here, this is uh, now the new settings. And if you will restart your printer, it will stay because it will um, save to the EEPROM, I guess, or the SRAM or something like that. So if I would say want to change back to my old settings, because I now this is for you. So X0 y um, was minus 37.7 and z was minus 4.7 for me now press enter pop. sending m500 for saving m8500 check and as you can see i am back to my proper settings for my printer so once you've done this, basically um, your Pro Offset has been updated to the printer. It's saved to the EEPROM and um, you never have to touch this again unless you print out a new shroud and um, yeah, I basically do that. Another method of doing it, this I have now closed the printer face just in case it interferes with OctoPrint. You will now open your OctoPrint instance okay then you will connect it got or it didn't connect automatically because i had printer face open before so now it's connected as you can see it's operational you will go to your g code i guess uh terminal i would just disable all of this for ease and turn on auto scroll there you go um, it's basically the same thing, M851, you get your results, then M851 with your X, um, Y, and if you want Z, which you should keep to zero to um, 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 basically start anew, but this is my setting that I don't want to change, so you should just use uh, the zero. Then you press enter. Just letting it disable the auto screw. There we go. And it's been put in. So 
Then you press M500 to save again. Same deal, and then M85.2. There you go. Comes back like this. So now it's safe again. So this is the way to do it through Octoprint, or if you have a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint, so you don't need another PC. It's this. Next up is doing it through the firmware. Okay, so I will now assume that you know how to compile your own firmware. Uh, otherwise, this is another entirely different uh, deal, I suppose. Um, you will go to your config.h file over here. And then you will go and look for, I think it's probe offset. I'm looking in the wrong. Probe offset, there you go. This is the little diagram that I showed before on the other um, thing, like up and right is positive, left and down is negative. You can read the documentation for a bit more um, explanation, I suppose. So, and also to probe offset over here, you have the X, Y and Z um, offsets. So, in this case, um, mine was minus 20 or uh, 37.7 there we go and i would keep the z to zero and my x was zero your x is probably different and your y is probably also different um after you've filled in the no uh, nozzle to a uh, probe offset you can then double check all your other settings if you want to open or activate something else. And then you can build your um, firmware and flash it to your printer. Um, it's basically as simple as that. So config h file, you control F to open this box and then you type in probe off. And then you can define your nozzle to probe offset like so. And uh, you're basically done after you uh, compiled it and uploaded it to your printer. Well then, uh, I hope you've gotten a bit more insight as to what probes there are, what they are, how they work, and how to either um, set your probe offset in um, either the firmware or send it through the G-code using Printerface or Octoprint. Um, uh, that's basically it. Um, if you have any comments on how to improve this guide, please let me hear. I'm open for suggestions and I'll probably redo it at some other point. I'm not really the most, um, I guess, videography, uh, studied person, I guess. So I hope, uh, yeah, you've, uh, managed to do it. Let me know. Uh, sorry for the long video, but this is basically uh, how my brain functions. So, till next time, to the next video.